Hey, good morning, my wood turning friends. Thought we'd uh, do a discussion today about wood finishes for wood turners. Um, you know, you could really do a piece a lot of damage by putting the wrong finish on it or a bad finish. So let's let's get together and talk about it. Well, like I mentioned when I was walking down here to work today, I thought it was good to have a quick discussion about finishes and and then I would load this up to YouTube for for folks who are having trouble with the issue. Um, it's a it's a commonly misunderstood topic. Um, finishes could be all over the board. there's there's some right answers, there's some wrong answers. Um, the bottom line is when you go to put a finish on something, it's up to you to do a quality job. Choosing the right finishes, however, is more important sometimes. Um, if you choose the wrong finish on certain items, it's going to be the demise of your work. Um, I'll give you a story. When I was a young man, young crafter, and I was making plates and I was making everything, but uh, I was making plates and platters and bowls for my family and friends. And I sold them on the weekends, but I put shellac on everything because it was available um, and it was easy to apply and it made the wood look great. Well, uh, I went over to help my brother uh, move his house and they were having a garage sale that day and two of my pieces were on his garage sale table for 50 cents or whatever. whatever. And I looked at those items and I went, oh my goodness, the finishes fell. That, that, they look horrible. And this is the brother who doesn't know how to refinish things. This is not what he's into. So anyway, they put them in a cupboard. And they sat there for five years. And then eventually they said, why do we even have these? Let's just sell them at the garage sale. Well, um, that put a light bulb in my head to say, wow, the finish is very important. What would I do next time to make sure that my work doesn't go to the garage sale? So anyway, let, let's quickly talk about and keep this simple because it can get really in the weeds. And I, if I could recommend a book, this is uh, Bob Flexner's book, um, on on wood finishing uh, just an excellent all-around book it's it, it, it can be technical in a sense but uh it, it can actually tell you how to make finishes and, and a few other things but but i highly recommend that so um let's 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 break down finishes into two categories films and penetrating oils um, but before we even apply a finish to anything, we want to consider a few things, and they're very important things to consider. Let me share my screen here, and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, let's just say, uh, well, we know there's hybrids of all these, um, but let's just say there's two types of finishes, membranes or films, and then penetrating oils. Um, I would like to think, just keep it simple, all my art objects, if I'm making art, I like to keep these, I like to think I'm using film-based finishes, but when I make utilitarian items, I like to go into the penetrating oils. Um, and I'll explain why, um, but there are exceptions to the rule. Um, so um, let's look um, at, at the, at the film-based finishes first. We have waxes, lacquers, polys, acrylics, paints, shellacs, epoxies, the list goes on and on. Uh, anything that's going to sit on the surface and protect the surface or enhance the surface is going to be a film finish. Penetrating oils, we have the Danish oils, which are polymerizing oils, usually a blend of polyurethane, odorless mineral spirits, and say tongue oil or linseed oil. Those would be a, a, da a typical Danish oil. And I use that on certain items uh, here in my shop. I love the finish. Um, linseed oil, tongue oil, mineral oil, which is a hydrocarbon, and uh, the natural oils, and these would be vegetables and nut type oils. And we'll, we'll break these down, keep it, keep it simple. Again, like before you put any finish on anything, think of these considerations, very important. And this is my list in the, in the, in the scale of how I think about it. Toxicity is number one for me. It may be two or three for you because I'm around finishes every day. So I, I, I don't want them to touch my nose or my skin because they're, they could be toxic and, and could be make me sick. So toxicity is very important. Now, toxicity to the end user isn't really a consideration because most all film-based finishes and penetrating oils, when dry, 
are no longer toxic. So keep that in mind. Very important. Skill to apply and repair. That's number two for me. I want my end users, the, the people I sell my work to, give my work to, I want them to be able to repair the finish by rubbing mineral oil on it or walnut oil um, to recondition that. I want them to get very attached to the work because I want them to finish it. But the beauty of that, of these types of penetrating oils, is they do not take skill to apply or repair. And anybody can do it. Marketability, which is funny, you would think that would be number one on my list because um, I sell my work. And marketability is typically things that are shiny. And the general market always likes shine. But I sacrifice shine on the type of work that I do typically, salad bowls, plates, platters, those things. Because if I put a shiny finish on them, my end users, my users will be disappointed over time because that shine is going to go away and they'll be looking for a way to repair that finish. And if I put a shiny finish on something of, 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 that I make, it's going to be a very costly repair and a very skillful repair. That's that's why I choose a penetrating type oil for the type of work that I do typically. And then do you need a durable finish? Durability is very important for lots of things that we make. Bottle stoppers, pens, pepper mills. Uh, we need a finish that, that we can put on something that isn't going to wear away um, quickly. And then uh, those are the considerations that we really need to think of before we apply anything to wood. So let's look at the films uh, on their own. Uh, let's start with waxes. And there we are. Let's bring up this sheet here. Hopefully that'll look good. Yeah, that looks right. Um, so going back to the scale or the considerations, waxes can be very toxic. Um, typically, they're blended with petro distillates, and um, you don't want them to touch your hands, and you don't want them. You don't want to smell them. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, let me think about. Um, and and then let's go, let's talk about the next thing. Skill to apply and repair, it's excellent. It's easy to do. Anybody could rub wax on something, rub it around, and then buff it out with a paper towel or a buffer. Marketability is good because it leaves a shine. Durability is lousy. So if you're putting wax on your work, you've got to know it's going away soon because it doesn't have any durability. However, there are exceptions. Let me show you this little burial urn here. This is a burial urn for a dog. Um, notice how shiny it is. So this has a uh, petroleum-based paste wax over the top of it. Now, this item is just going to be put in a case and be dusted occasionally. So the wax is, is a good choice for this because it, it it's not going to get water spots. It's not going to get handled a lot. Um, like I said, just going to be dusted occasionally. So that would be a good spot for waxes. But other than that, you really don't want to put waxes on a whole lot of things. Um, just to show you another item here, this is a beautiful box by my friend Richard Raffin. Let me stop share on this and so you can pick up a little bit of... Uh, better view this has got water spots all of it it's it, it's it's because richard made this in a demonstration so he just rubbed a food base wax on it and um i actually got this piece in a reno antique store for six dollars and fifty cents and i suspect that maybe the owner probably was deceased and then his estate saw this and said oh it's just a little wooden box and the finish is all mucked up and so it ended up at the antique store had Richard uh, had more time, I'm sure he would have put on a, a a wipe on poly on something like this, and then we would not have put wax on top of it, um, and you wouldn't have got these water spots. So be careful when you put wax on anything because it can cause trouble, uh, especially if you're selling your work at craft fairs, uh, outdoor craft fairs when the in the summer when you have uh, thunderstorms rolling by, you'll you'll be you'll be unhappy. Um, let's talk quickly about acrylics. Acrylics um, in this scenario are super glue and super glues are excellent durable finishes. Toxicity is high. Skill to apply and repair is medium. Durability is good to excellent if you ask me. Marketability is good. Cost is kind of high. Um, 
but an, uh, the super glue could be mopped onto pens and bottle stoppers and even small diameter pepper mills and provides a really good durable finish. We will talk one more thing about acrylics here, um, and those will be our lacquers. Let's let's look at our lacquers. Now, lacquers uh, could either be in a rattle can or you can go down to a high quality paint store and buy up a, a quart of it or a, a gallon. And they're probably going to be acrylics based. I, I said here, most lacquers are nitrocellulose based. That's true. They normally have resins added like acrylic, urethane, and vinyl to help make them build because um, they want to build, you want to make them build fast so you don't have to give three, four, five coats. Um, Let's, let's look at their attributes. Toxicity is high. Skill to apply and repair is good, if not excellent. Um, unlike the lacquer, or unlike the varnishes or the polyurethanes, you can repair these finishes easily. So if, let's just say on my little holoform here, if I oversprayed it and got a drip, I could wipe that drip off and then spray immediately right over that area and it blends in and repairs itself. And you can't do that with many other finishers. And that's the beauty of it. And you don't have to etch it between coats or anything because the lacquer eats itself and attaches it to, to itself. Marketability is excellent. Durability, fair to good. The, the new acrylic lacquers are, are relatively durable, but I really only stick to them on for my artwork. I wouldn't put them on any train wear or anything like that because they would wear away quickly. Uh, let's talk, let's talk varnish real quick. This, I'm, I, I kind of, I, I kind of put polyurethane and varnish together. Varnishes, well, polyurethanes could be a varnish simply by just blending it with something. So uh, a, 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 the definition of a varnish is blended materials basically so polyurethane mixed with say 10 percent odorless mineral spirits or five percent linseed oil is now a varnish um, so these are the most protective and durable of the most commonly used finishes that we have and there, there are uh, epoxies and we're not even going to talk about that because i don't even work with them um, toxicity is high Skill to apply and repair is difficult, as I mentioned. If you get a drip, if this one had, this one had wipe on poly or polyurethane, and you get a drip, you've got, you've got to do a lot of sand work, and then you have to recoat the whole surface. It, they don't blend in together. Marketability is good, of course, it leaves a shine. Durability is excellent. Cost is high, and uh, you know, like I said, it's a very skillful um, finish to apply. Uh, one other one other um, uh, film-based finish we'll talk about is French polishes and shellacs. Um, I don't even know if people use the term French polish anymore, but shellac isn't used much. It used to be in the old days. Toxicity is high only because it's usually blended with a petro distillate or, or denatured alcohol. Um, just don't let it touch your skin or, or breathe it. Skill to apply and repair is easy. That's why I was using it on my plates for my brother in that, in that, in that story. Um, it made the wood look good. Its marketability was good. Uh, durability is low. Um, they don't have a lot of durability. And there's, there's, a fi there's a couple finishes out there marketed for pens and bottle stoppers that are shellac based. And that's unfortunate because they don't provide the durability that those materials or those items need um, cost medium to high so those are the film-based finishes let's let's go back to the wood finishes uh document that i had here let's look at the penetrating oils um danish oils uh, could be they're really varnishes but we just call them that um let's look so danish oils um if if I was to make a Danish oil, um, I would blend one third polyurethane, one third odorless mineral spirits, and one third boiled uh, linseed oil, and that would make a nice Danish oil. And um, like for instance, my going back to my little burial urn here, you can see how rich it is in color, and that was caused by a Danish oil. I my first coat of finish on this particular piece was a Danish oil, the, the blend that I just told you about. Then I let that dry overnight, and then I spray lacquered it with an acrylic lacquer. And then I scrubbed it down with 4 aught steel wool and, and a, a petroleum-based paste wax, and I buffed it with a paper towel. 
And that that's the finish here. Now let's let's keep going. Uh, linseed oil, uh, which is the natural oil. Um, we have tongue oil. Um, all three of these uh, oils are kind of photoreactive, so they darken over time. Uh, so you may be concerned about adding these to light colored woods like maple and ash. Um, it'll take darker woods, no problem. Now let's talk about mineral oil. <clears throat> mineral oil is a hydrocarbon. It is a petroleum based non-toxic oil. Um, it's used, it's a great, I'll say it's a great finish uh, for um, your typical homeowner who has woodwork, butcher block tops, salad bowls, treen ware, anything wooden in their house, they can put a little bit of mineral oil on it, reconditions them, make them, makes them look rich. Um, uh, so mineral oil is still a very viable uh, finish. I don't know if we can really call it a finish, but anyway, and then the natural oils, and, and we'll talk about the natural oils. Let's go ahead and clear this off and then look at the document uh, that is uh, natural oils. Let's talk about those real quick. And that would be, uh, let's see, I think I've got it here. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I think I'll cue up this one. Mineral oil, uh, just, we already talked about it. Penetrates, to, doesn't protect wood from the, from scratches or moisture. All penetrating oils do not. Let's talk about that. So if you, I've got a salad bowl here. Um, I make salad bowls, obviously, and that's my primary deal. I'm I'm going to share the screen here. Um, I want this this salad bowl to feel like wood. That's why I don't put film finishes on them. I use a walnut oil based finish. Walnut oil. The beauty of walnut oil, unlike mineral oil, is walnut oil stays in the wood and dries, whereas mineral oil evaporates. Um, so. So what I want to talk about is if you are worried about stains and scratches in your woodwork, the, the stuff that you're using, then penetrating oils probably aren't a good choice for you. But I would like to change your mind because the wear and the stains and the scratches, and if the bowl or the item was made correctly, it'll last for decades, if not centuries. Um, and the wear and the patina that it gets uh, is is more beautiful than the day you put it into use. But it, it's, a, it's a mindset. You have to think that way. So not going to try to change your mind, but that's that's the reality of penetrating oils as a finish, especially mineral oil, because it's going to evaporate and it's going to have to be reapplied uh, relatively uh, quickly. So going back to that, uh, uh, mineral oils, low in toxicity, Skill to rep repair is, is easy. Everybody and their grandkids can do it. That's why we do it. Marketability is not very good. It's okay. It does give the wood luster and depth. Um, and durability is low and cost medium. Um, let's, let's quickly go through the other uh, natural oils and just kind of give you a thought as to why we would use one over the other. Come on there. Um, these... Natural oils are high in a particular fatty acid called linoleic acid. Um, and those are the ones you want to use. Anything over 50% linoleic acid is probably a pretty good natural oil to use. There are drawbacks to them, but uh, they do dry, dry slow. Um, linoleic acid is the main fatty acid that makes uh, oils dry and stay stable. There's other fatty acids like folic acid, oleic acid, uh, there, the list goes on, but linoleic acid is the, the particular acid that makes the oil stable and it makes it dry. So the higher that level is, the better. The crude oil values, for instance, for um, typical natural oils, you can see walnut oil is very high and that's why it's a favorite for woodworkers. Uh, soft flower oil, if you can get it in the West, Pretty good finish, and it's not. Both of those oils are not very photoreactive. So once you put them on the wood, you get what you get. It doesn't change color much. Uh, hemp is now coming into vogue. Very expensive, unfortunately. Uh, soybean, if you, it's a little low on linoleic acid, and this is why we don't use olive oil uh, in particular. It tastes great, but it's it's very low in that particular linoleic acid. Um, so there you go. That that's kind of. Uh, a, a simple thought about all these things. Um, I'm just going to, 
uh, let's close all this out. And there, there's there's certainly more to talk about. And and like I said, the, it can get deep. Um, but this will kind of uh, maybe solve some issues. But the bottom line is, and I have the unfortunate duty sometimes to be a judge at some woodworking competition. And usually, if it isn't a poor design, it's a poor finish. I would say 90% of the things I look at have poor finishes. So I hope you get out there and 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 finish your work right. See you another time.